Hi my stylists, I missed you guys. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I built this custom pink phone booth for my client's Beauty Brunch 2 event. Welcome to Event Styles LLC, where we bring the style to your events. Before we get into the video, here is some important information to know. The first one is the list of materials and equipment that I use is not going to be listed in the video. It's gonna be down in the description box. Next, when it comes to the measurements, if you see a solid line, that means that you're going to wanna make a cut at this line. Dashed or dotted lines means that do not make a cut at this line. This was just so I can keep track of the measurements. Next, any line that you see that is blue or words that is blue, that means that this section of the wood is going to be used to build the roof. The same thing applies for green, except anything in green means that this section of the wood is going to be used to build the base. Lastly, anything that you see that is red means that that section of the wood is going to be used to build the strips for the windows. It took me almost four weeks to build this, but I also built a directional sign, the stands that went behind an 18 foot backdrop, as well as a custom checkered flooring for this event too. If you would like to build this phone booth with me, be safe, be patient with yourself, and don't be afraid to ask for help. Now let's get into this video. So now I'm going to start off with the front door. If you look in the top right corner, this is going to be a breakdown of the measurements that I used to design the front door. Um, all, the only thing you're gonna need for this section is a four foot by eight foot by three and a half inch plywood. I got mine from Home Depot. You're gonna need a pencil and you're gonna need a ruler. So I just measured out everything. Um, just like I'm doing in the top right corner. Remember, blue means that it's gonna be used for the roof. Green means that it's going to be used for the base. Any solid line is where I actually made cuts and any dotted lines were just so I can keep track of the measurements and make sure that all of my sides were uniform. It took me a full week to draw out all the measurements, not just for the front door, but also for the sides. Um, I would recommend getting somebody to help you. I did this part by myself, so I had to make sure that I really paced myself out because the plywood itself is very, very heavy. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the cuts. I'm using a mini circular saw that I got from Amazon. Um, remember any line that was solid is where you're gonna make a cut. Any line that was dashed, do not make a cut there. Make sure that you're being safe, use goggles, use gloves, and take your time, ask for help if you need it. So this is where I made my first mistake. Um, it was not noticeable in the end, but I cut on a dotted line when I was not supposed to. Um, this is really only my second time building something and I'm still learning. So if I can build this, so can you. Um, be patient with yourself. Um, if you make a mistake, just ask for help down below and I'll be sure to help you out. So now I'm gonna start cutting out the strips that I use on the side doors and on the front door to create a windowy look. So I actually don't have any glass there, I just have wood. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make little strips, um, one inch strips from the excess wood. It'll make more sense how I made those measurements in the upcoming uh, measurement clips. So stay tuned for that. But essentially all I'm doing is I'm cutting out my vertical uh, strips. I did cut it a little bit too short, um, but here is where I'm cutting out my horizontal strips. I'm, I used half of an eight foot by four foot by a fourth of an inch panel um, from Home Depot as well to make my horizontal strips. I made about probably 40. I think it's always good to cut out more than you need, um, but that's how many strips that I made. And now it's time to assemble the door together. Um, I'm gonna use um, some hinges that I got from Home Depot to actually make the door uh, movable, the inner part. And I'm using this uh, power drill that I got from Amazon. Um, that'll be down in the description box down below. But basically what I'm doing right now is I'm just making little holes inside of the wood so I can go ahead and screw in the screws. It's better to drill a hole in first. That way it's an easy transition for the screws to go inside the wood and it reduces the uh, likelihood of the wood itself splitting on you. So don't, don't skip that step. I really recommend drilling your holes first and then putting in the screws because you can mess up the wood if you skip that step. I only used four hinges for the door, so I'm gonna repeat this step a couple of times. 
but for the most part all you're doing is just screwing in the the hinges into the door so it opens outward what I did next was flip the front door over and I'm going to go in with straight connectors and um, screws that I got from Home Depot these are half inch screws um, and I'm going to drill in holes and then screw in the, the screws from the inside because I don't want this to be showing if you're looking at it from the outside so it's important to do all the drilling and all the the screwing on the inside of the phone booth as opposed to on the outside if you are enjoying this video go ahead and give me a like comment down below what you're thinking if you have any questions and go ahead and subscribe So this is what the door is looking like so far. So now I am going to go in and install this window bolt. I'm doing this so I can keep the door locked whenever it is not in use. Now you can see that I used those horizontal strips that I cut out. I, I am using clamps that I got from Walmart to attach them six inches apart from each other. And then I'm going to go in with my um, power drill and I'm just going to cut in holes and then screw them into place using half inch screws. So now I'm going to take my yardstick and I'm going to make measurements that are six inches away from each other. That way I can start positioning the vertical strips. So I sanded down the sides a little bit and then I took my clamps and I positioned them where the marks were made. Um, next you're going to see that I did cut them a little bit too short. I'm going to fix this towards the end of the video but I'm just going to go in with some screws at the bottom and I'm just going to screw them into place uh, using my power drill and my screwdriver. So now I'm just going to go ahead and start sanding down the surface. This is going to help make it nice and smooth so I can go ahead and uh, start painting. Um, I got this sander from Amazon and I'm also going to drill holes into where the strips intersect so I can start um, connecting those with my mini screws. So now I'm going to go ahead and start painting the front door. I'm using high gloss pink punch from Home Depot. I recommend actually getting the outdoor um, paint. I'm using indoor, but I think outdoor would be a little bit better. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and start applying two coats. I want to say make sure that especially when you're doing the window portion of it, that you're checking the back to make sure that it's not dripping over to the other side. So just go ahead and do two coats uh, and it, this dries within a couple hours. So it doesn't take that long. So now I'm going to go ahead and start the measurements for the side doors. The side doors are the same, so I'm only going to show you how I made it once. However, the measurements were a little bit different in terms of what I did with the excess wood that was not used. So um, on the bottom right, you're going to see the measurements just like last time. Green means that the wood is going to be used for the base. Red means that the wood was used for the strips and blue means the wood was used for the roof. So any dashed lines, you do not want to make a cut here. Any solid lines, you want to make a cut right there, okay? Just like before. Now here are the measurements for the second side door that I made um, on the top right of the screen. This is, I'm actually still working on the first side door that I made initially and I'm, what I'm doing is I have to go back and reconnect the wood because again I made a cut on the dotted line when I was not supposed to. Notice that this uh, measurement has a lot of red because the excess strips that I'm using is going to actually be used for the strips that I cut out before that's going to be on the doors. 
Everything in blue, remember, is for the roof. So the excess parts at the top, I'm gonna use that wood for the roof. Okay, so now I'm just reconnecting the pieces of the wood down below. And I had, I made a lot of these cuts because what ended up happening is, is the phone booth ended up being too tall for where I was actually building it. So I'm building in my sister's apartment. So shout out to Judith for letting me do this. And it was too tall. So I had to make a lot of last minute adjustments and it, it threw me off a lot. So a lot of these cuts were because there are last minute changes that I did not plan for. And I just thought I could keep it all in my head. And I just, it just threw me off a lot. So now I'm just going to sand down the wood. It's very important not to skip this step, um, especially for the horizontal strips. Using a fourth inch thick um, plywood is going to make it very rough when you make the cuts. So it's very important that you don't skip over this. Next, I'm going to take my vertical strips. I'm going to position them. Um, in a little bit, I'm going to take my yardstick and actually make sure that everything is straight and everything is exactly six inches away from each other, just so it's a uniform look with the rest of the doors. So I'm just taking my yardstick and making my measurements. And then in a second, I'm going to take out my screw gun and I am going to screw them in using one and one fourth inch screws. Now that I'm done sanding, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that everything is in place and is exactly six inches apart before I go ahead and start drilling my holes and screwing in every single um, place where they connect. Just like with the front door, I'm gonna go ahead and use the same paint. And I'm going to go in, um, I'm gonna go in with two coats and I'm gonna paint both sides. Be sure that you're checking the other side constantly to make sure that you're not um, dripping on the other side. And if you are, just go ahead and use your brush to just spread it out a little bit. Um, and you wanna make sure you apply two coats. Now the back door was the easiest to measure out. All I'm gonna do is I'm going to make my measurements. Again, red means that it strips for the window. Blue means that it's for the roof and green means it's for the base, right? So um, I did have more than enough uh, strips for the roof in the base and I made more than I needed because I wanted to leave room for errors now notice that there is no window for the back but that's those strips were used to create other projects like my checkered flooring that was ended up being used for the 360 videos so if you're interested in seeing the tutorials for all the other stuff that I built for this um, event comment that down below and let me know and I'll put something together for you So now I'm going to measure out the roof and the base. Again, blue is the roof and green is the base. So for the most part, I made two squares. They are not identical in size and they're actually not perfect squares, they're rectangles. So um, I measured them out and then I also used a lot of this wood to actually build uh, fillers for uh, the base. So those are the little strips that you see. They were also featured on the side door and they are 2.25 inches by 37.5 inches long. So this is actually the second half of the fourth of an inch plywood that I used to make the horizontal strips for, from before. So what I'm doing now is I'm just making out my measurements for the top of the base that I'm gonna do. Um, and in a second, you're gonna see me put everything together.
I'm gonna finish making out the measurements for the base fillers. Um, again, these are 37.5 inches long by 2.25 inches tall. And this is going to go inside of the base. Um, I think I made about like almost 30 of these, but make as much as you as you can using the excess wood because the more that you have in there, the more weight that the base will be able to support. Just like before, I'm just gonna go right in and I'm gonna make my cuts using my circular mini saw. If you are enjoying this video, go ahead and give me a like, comment down below, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you're the first to know when I post another video, and comment down below if you have any questions. Let me know what you would do differently. So now I'm going to show you how I assembled the base of the phone booth. So if you look in the top left corner, I have the, the measurements for the roof and the base up again, except this time the little strips that you see around it, the pieces of wood around it, those are actually what we cut out earlier. So you don't have to make any more cuts. I'm just showing you what was used around the, the phone booth this time, the base of the phone booth this time. So I'm taking my strips of wood and I'm using corner braces to actually attach the, the wood to the base. And I'm gonna use um, half inch screws, the same screws that we use to make the little window thingies on the, the, side, the side doors and the front door. The same screws are what I'm gonna use to actually connect the, the side pieces to the base board itself. So now I'm gonna actually start building the, the base by putting in the fillers from earlier that we cut out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to fill up as much as I can and spread it out as evenly as possible. That's why I was saying the more that you can cut out, the better, because the more you fill this up, the stronger and sturdier it will be and the more weight it can support. So I'm gonna take one and one fourth inch screws and I'm just going to screw them into place from the side and I'm gonna do this on both sides. So now that we are almost done with uh, screwing in the pieces of wood to the base, I'm actually going to stand on top of it and you want to make sure you do this to make sure that nothing is wiggling because this has to be able to support the weight of a human being. So if something is shifting underneath you, go ahead and screw in some more stuff, um, some more screws to make sure that it's straight. Another thing I will recommend is marking on the sides where the strips are. That way when you're connecting the phone booth itself to the base, you'll know where to put in a screw because the half, the fourth of an inch um, plywood is very very thin so it's very hard to get the nails to actually grip onto it so I recommend just taking a step and marking where those strips are so now I'm just going to screw into place the top of the base using one and one fourth inch screws in my screwdriver I'm just going to um, drill everything into place and um, just make sure that it is nice and flat while I am drilling everything together So now I'm gonna go ahead and start coating um, the panels with some polyurethane. I used indoor polyurethane. I recommend actually using outdoor polyurethane. I also used water-based polyurethane and I would recommend using oil because the water started thinning out the paint. So um, it, it almost started dripping a little bit. I was able to fix it by you know painting it over a little bit more, but it was a hassle. So I recommend using a uh, oil-based one, also one that does not have an odor because this literally smelled up the entire apartment and it was very hard to sleep. So I had to open up all the windows and I recommend, I recommend just using one that doesn't have an odor because those are out there. I
So now I'm gonna actually start to screw in the panels um, together to make the foam booth shape. You're not gonna actually see me do that because in a minute my camera is gonna die and I honestly did not notice until much later. So what I did, I did have some help from my friend Joyce. Thank you, Joyce. Um, what she did was she held up the front side of it for me. And if you look on the, the bottom left, this is how I positioned everything. So pay attention to that because that's how it's going to, that's how everything is going to fit together. So um, I had her hold on the, onto the top half of it for me. And then for the bottom half, what I did is I went in with this um, 90 degree ang angle and corner clamp that I got. I actually got my clamp from Amazon, but you can find this one at Home Depot. And I positioned those corners together. I screwed it into place and then I screwed the sides. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my um, floral backdrop. I got this from Amazon. When you're getting yours, make sure that um, it's high quality and uh, be sure to read the reviews because you could also find this on Etsy and I think a couple other websites carry it as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my staple gun, I'm gonna position it and then I'm just going to staple it into place. My staple gun is from Home Depot but I'll have in the description box a link of where you can find it on um, Amazon. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fix the, the strips that were too short from earlier. So I'm gonna take my clamps um, and I'm just going, I made it probably like eight inches more. Don't worry about doing this step because the measurements that I gave you, you won't have to do this. But what I'm gonna do now, I'm just going to clamp everything into place and I'm gonna take my screwdriver and um, screw that into place. So now I'm just going to sand down the side of the door frame as well as the, you know, side of the panel so I can get it, so the door can open a little bit more smoothly. I also just wanted to shout out my sister, Samantha. Thank you for picking up my slack and painting everything that I needed to be painting and sanding down everything that I needed to be sanded. And to Judith, thank you for letting me um, use your apartment to build this massive phone booth. I could not have done it without either one of you guys. Moving on to how I assembled the roof. This is just a breakdown of how um, I positioned everything. Again, these cuts have already been made if you followed the measurements from earlier. Um, one thing I will say is I wish I would not have put the screws on the outside. Pay attention to how I position the screws in the measurements. Go ahead and rewind if you need to, but that's how I recommend actually um, screwing everything in just so you can hide the nails better. In the end, I think the phone booth looked beautiful, but I think it would have just been a better final touch if you couldn't see the screws at the top. So here's my custom um, telephone sign that I had made. It has a sticker on the back and also a self-adhesive um, round molding. I'm gonna clean off the sides of the phone booth where I'm gonna position everything. I'm going to take my um, telephone sign and position it right in the middle. I'm taking, on the, taking off the backing and then it sticks on its own. And this, I'm just gonna wipe everything down and make sure that it's nice and press on firmly onto the side. So now I'm just going to cover up any cuts that I see that I are uh, that I don't really like. And I'm gonna take some scissors and I'm just going to um, cut off the excess molding that I don't need. Again, this is self-adhesive, so it just sticks right on there. This is the other side, and I'm just gonna do the same thing. Um, this one doesn't have the other cut on it because remember I made that one cut that I wasn't supposed to on the side panel. That's what I was cutting on the other side. So right here, what I did, what I had to do was measure six inches away from um, the cut that's right above the window. So I measured six inches from there just to make sure that it was even and looked uniform with the other side. I did go ahead and apply another coat of paint on top of everything that has not been painted yet. And this is how it came out. So I did just wanna showcase that I did finish up the floor backdrop off camera. All I did was cut off the excess and staple it to where it looked presentable. On the bottom of the sides, I did go ahead and add some molding down there too to cover up those lines. And then the roof, I had my friend Mark um, screw that onto me 
on for me because it was too tall for me guys so he did that for me so shout out to him and this is the finished look guys if you are interested in seeing the floor tutorial let me know and i'll put something together for you thank you for watching the video let us know what you think in the comment sections down below and be sure to follow us on our other social media pages to stay connected with us and we'll see you in the next video